Hello guys, welcome to episode 16 of our Access Control Explanatory Series. In this episode, we are going to go over the AC19, the Access Control for mobile devices. But as always, a free way to support the channel is by hitting the subscribe button to help grow the channel if you haven't done so already. And I do appreciate the support. And also do smash the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Thank you and let's get started. Access control for mobile devices. This refers to the security measures and mechanisms implemented to regulate and manage user access to resources, features, and corporate data on mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets within an organization. These access controls ensures that only authorized individuals or entities can access and perform certain actions on the device applications and data. Example of some common access control mechanisms for mobile devices are pins, password and patterns. And you also have the biometric authentication on the mobile devices, the fingerprinting and the face recognition. And then we have the device encryption. So we have uh, encryption on, uh, on the data on the device. So if somebody get hold of the device and then they are not authorized to they cannot be able to read the uh, messages or the data on these mobile devices. And then we also have the remote wiping capabilities. So most organizations will implement or they put some remote wiping capabilities just so, you know, in an event where these uh, mobile devices are misplaced or they get lost, they can be remotely wiped. You know, the admins can remotely wipe the data on these uh, um mobile devices or the smartphones and the tablets so the companies will not be losing sensitive data or get the sensitive data in the hands of uh, malicious actors now let's look at the control requirement for ac19 access control for mobile devices in 853 rep 5. access control for mobile devices now the control a it says establish configuration requirements connection requirement and implementation guidance for organization controlled mobile devices to include when such devices are outside of the control areas that is the organizational perimeter you know or the organizational premises and also authorizes the connection of mobile devices to organizational system now let's look at the discussion a mobile device is a computing device that has a small form factor such that it can easily be carried by a single individual. It's designed to operate without a physical connection, possesses local, not removable or removable data storage and includes a self-contained power source. Mobile device functionality may also include voice communication capabilities on board sensors that allow the device to capture information and or built-in features for synchronizing local data with remote locations. Examples include smartphones and tablets. Mobile devices are typically associated with a single individual. The processing, storage, and transmission capability of mobile device may be comparable to or merely a subset of a notebook desktop system, depending on the nature and intended purpose of the device. Protection and control of mobile devices is behavior or policy based and requires users to take physical action to protect and control such devices when outside of the control areas. It went further by saying, due to the large variety of mobile devices with different characteristics and capabilities, organizational restrictions may vary from the different classes or types of such devices. And also, it says that adequate security for mobile devices goes beyond the requirement specified in AC19. Many safeguards for mobile devices are reflected in other controls. AC20 addresses mobile devices that are not organization control. These controls used to have five enhancements, but three of these enhancements have been withdrawn or incorporated into media protection, MP7, which is the media use. Right, and then the, the ones that are left are number four, access control for mobile devices that is what restriction for classified information 
and then the last one is access control for mobile devices full devices or container based encryption and also it's very important to note that this control is also selected for all the three control baseline be it in a four or a five that is the low baseline the moderate base baseline and the high baseline and now, so let's look at the control requirements simplification what is this control saying this access control for mobile devices is implemented to ensure that only authorized connection from mobile devices are allowed to access the organizational network and its components this control is usually not applicable for most systems so when you're going through your SSP or when you're getting ready for security control assessment, notice that the AC19 is for the most part not applicable for most system, unless your system has some functionality that require some mobile devices to be incorporated into the system. But other than that, for the most part, it is not applicable for a lot of system within the environment. All right, moving on. So here we do have the benefit of what access control for mobile devices. Number one, remote device management. If you have a good access control for your mobile devices, it gives you that ability to remotely manage the device in an event where the device is missing or stolen or anything like that. You can remotely, you know, manage the device by deleting or wiping the data so you can safeguard the organizational data. User authentication. If you have a good mobile device, uh, access control for mobile devices, you'll be able to control the authentication. You can specify the length of the pin. If you don't want the, uh, the four pin, the four you know, character pin, you can opt for six. You know, for the most part, you see that it's six people go for six for higher security, right? So you can control the user authentication. If you want to, you know, incorporate a fingerprinting or facial recognition, you can actually do that when you have a good access control for mobile device. And then the data protection, which kind of ties in into uh, the device, uh, remote device management, right? You, you'll be able to have a good protection for your data. And then also the last one here is meeting regulatory compliance, right? So if you are under some regulatory requirement like FISMA, SARC, or, you know, ISO standard and what have you, HIPAA, what if, whatever standard that, you, you know, your organization, uh, you know, must abide by, you know, when you have good access control for mobile devices within the organization, it helps you to meet the regulatory compliance requirements. All right, so now let's look at the control assessment approach. How do you assess this, this control? Number one, as usual, or as always, to ensure this control is in place and functioning as intended, that is the design and functional or the operational effectiveness, we do the following. Number one, you obtain and examine the SSP and the access control policy and procedure dash one control to review the organization policy on mobile device access restriction, connection requirement, and implementation guidance, right? So the SSP or the policy and procedure documentation will definitely capture all this, you know, restriction, connection requirement, implementation guidance and stuff like that. You read it and understand what is the company policy surrounding the access control for mobile device. Once you have a good understanding of this, then that actually detects how you are gonna assess this control or what artifact or evidence you're gonna request based on whatever they specify and always is good to note that when you are assessing a control because organization differ from one organization to another you have to make sure you read the policy that tells you or that it takes what evidence you're going to request to verify that whatever they have in their policy is what they have implemented and that is what is in, in place right it's very important to take note of that do not use the standard from your previous organization and say, oh, this is how I assessed it. So I'm going to use the same standard here. No, you might be wrong. Always try to read how they implement this control because it's subjective, right? Every organization has their own ways of implementing certain things. So read the policy, the SSP, the implementation statement, see how they implement this. Because a lot of time I get questions like, oh, but that's not how I assessed it when I was in company or in agency A. Yes, that's true. Agency A is definitely not agency B. So when you are in agency B, try to understand how they do their, 
you know, uh, or, or how they implement this control by understanding the policy and the uh, implementation statement. That tells you what to look for to verify that it is actually in place. All right. So moving on, the next one here is if you can locate a mobile device connection point and attempt to connect to the organization's network through a mobile device. If you have any mobile device at hand, see if you can use that to connect to that, you know, uh, Wi-Fi, you know, or the wireless fidelity, you know, uh, access point. Observe if there are any connection restrictions. If there are, good. If not, then you know there's a problem here, right? So this is a way to actually verify that these restriction that was stated in the document, the access control policy and procedure and SSP is actually effective, you know, but otherwise, if you can validate whatever it is that they can provide a screenshot for the, the configuration, how they configure the access point and stuff like that, that will also suffice. That's it for this episode. Our next episode will be on AC20, the use of external systems. Please do like, subscribe, share, and comment. So the YouTube algorithm will expose this video to lots of people who could benefit from this video as well. Remember, keep chasing your greatness and never stop believing in yourself. Thank you and I'll see you in our next episode.